Well, today I would like to begin our discussion on plasma confinement, which is a very serious issue because plasma is a hot state of matter with very large pressure and it has a tendency to expand. So, if you want to confine the plasma, you have to think of some non traditional ways, and in that context, I would like to discuss single particle motion in a static magnetic field. Today, we will consider uniform magnetic field, and also if there is a transverse electric field present in the system, we would like to examine that also. So, basically, we will be discussing what is the need for plasma, con what are the needs for plasma confinement. Then we will discuss electron motion in uniform magnetic field, electron motion in crossed electric and magnetic fields that will give rise to E cross B drift. And then one of the major applications of this drift is in magnetically insulated diode. We shall learn what is this diode. And then there is a G cross B drift due to gravity, or gravitational field being perpendicular to magnetic field that also causes G cross B drift. Well, I would like to begin with the need for plasma confinement. Suppose I have a plasma confined somewhere here, produced somewhere here, then this plasma would have a pressure, partial pressure for electrons would be P e, which I can write down as a product of density of electrons and temperature of electrons, where Boltzmann constant is hidden in temperature. Similarly, for ions I can have a partial pressure P i, which is a product of ion density and ion temperature. Usually, N e is equal to N i, but T e and T i are different. But will happen that if I produce a plasma somewhere, then the plasma electrons will experience a force, which will be equal to minus gradient of pressure. And similarly, the ions will also experience a force, which will be equal to minus gradient of ion pressure as a consequence of which the plasma will try to move, electrons will go in these directions, ions will also follow them. So, where because pressure is higher here, less outside because plasma particles are not there. So, plasma will try to expand. If you want to stop this process of expansion, you should compensate for these forces and that is a serious issue. Before we delve into the issue of how to compensate for it, we would like to physically ex explore the possibilities that is it possible that by the application of a magnetic field, can you stop the motion of plasma from high pressure region to low pressure region. The clue that we get from here uh, uh, from the particle motion in the magnetic field is that suppose I have a magnetic field somewhere a static magnetic field S, B S. And if I have a fully ionized plasma, then if I leave an electron somewhere with some finite velocity, then it will try to move along the field lines like this. It rotates. So, the plasma is the electron is confined across the line of force. It cannot move perpendicular line of force too much. It will just gyrate about the line of force. And but it can freely move along the line of force. So, at least a uniform magnetic field appears to provide a confinement for electrons in the transverse direction or in two dimensions, transverse dimensions, but it provides no confinement along the magnetic field if it is uniform. Similarly, for the ions, if you launch an ion, the ion motion will be in the anti clockwise sense, we shall learn about it in a little while, and this goes like this. This is ion motion in the magnetic field, which is also localized above the line of force. So, at least 
in two dimensions, two transverse dimensions, you expect that the electrons and ions will be localized. Obviously, a central theme, central issue would be is it to confine the particles along the field lines. One possible scenario is that you can have a closed line of force like this. This kind of line of force you can produce by having a current carrying wire here. Suppose there is a current carrying wire carrying current perpendicular to the plane of this in this direction away from the screen towards you. Then the line of force will be like this. So, it is curved line of force. Then navally one can visualize that if the electron is gyrating over the line of force like this, if it is going like this then maybe it will keep on moving along the lines of force while you are the gyrating about the line of force and it will be coming back from here to here. But the serious problem is that the line of force is curved, there is a curvature on the line of force, it is not a straight line of force. So, we must examine whether this curvature in the line of force causes some departure from this circular motion. Another thing is that this magnetic field due to a wire current carrying a straight wire is non uniform, it is higher closer to a wire and as you move away from the wire B field amplitude decreases. So, the issue arises whether this non uniformity in the magnetic field magnitude will cause some departure in particle orbit and maybe is it that this non uniformity and curvature in the magnetic field causes the electrons to leave the line of force and move away. And if it happens then that is a very serious matter. So, a basic problem in magnetic confinement is to understand electron and ion motion in magnetic fields. But before we take up the problem of electron motion or ion motion in non-uniform and curved magnetic fields, we must examine the particle motion in a uniform magnetic field in some detail. So, I will consider a uniform magnetic field for the sake of specificness I will choose the z axis to be parallel to magnetic field. So, I choose my static magnetic field along z direction and let me characterize my electrons by charge minus e and mass small m these are for the electrons. So, I am trying to understand a single particle motion in a uniform magnetic field which is applied along z direction charge of the electron is minus e and mass is m. Let us write down the equation of motion for the electron. Rate of change of momentum and m dv by dt is equal to charge into v cross v the magnetic force on the electron. I divide this equation by mass and define a quantity omega c which is equal to E b s magnitude upon m. I will call this quantity as omega c and we shall recognize that this is the frequency of rotation of electrons around the line of force. We shall learn this in a little while. So, let me cause this quantity E b s magnitude by m as omega c, then this equation becomes on dividing by v m d b by d t is equal to minus omega c into v cross z cap because b s is in the z direction. Now, let me write down the components of this equation, x component will give me d 
v x by d t is equal to minus omega c and x component of this which turns out to be equal to v y. The y component of this equation will give me d v y upon d t is equal to omega c v x. These two equations are coupled v x equation has v y v y equation has v x. However, you can decouple them by differentiating either of the two equations once with respect to time. I will differentiate, differentiate this equation with respect to time, then I will obtain d 2 v x upon d t square is equal to minus omega c d v y by d t if I use this equation becomes v omega c square v x. This is a equation v x itself and it resembles simple harmonic oscillator equation and it has a simple solution. The simple solution of this equation is v x is equal to some constant into cos omega c t plus constant delta. So, there are two constants of integration it was a second order differential equation and hence will have in general two constants of motion a and a delta they can take any values depending on the initial conditions. Delta can be taken to be 0 by a proper choice of time the origin of time where do you choose then you can take delta to be 0. And if I use this equation this value of v x in the y component of equation of motion you obtain v y is equal to a sin omega c t plus delta. One can do one thing in here if you square and add these two components you will find that v x square plus v y square is equal to a square and this is a constant of motion and what are v x square plus v y square? v x is the perpendicular component of velocity in the x direction and v y is the component of velocity in the y direction. These two together when the square and added are denoted by a symbol v per p square and this is a constant of motion. So, if I call a is equal to v perp then these equations can be written as v x is equal to v perp cos omega c t plus delta and v y is equal to v perp sin omega c t plus delta. One can note one thing in here that if I plot a graph with v x on the x axis and v y on the y axis, what do we get? At certain instant of time when this argument is 0 v x is equal to v perp suppose this is the value of v perp from here to here and at that instant of time v y will be 0 because if the argument is 0 this is 0 then sin 0 is 0. So, this is point look is located here. At a later time when this argument time increases this quantity will acquire some finite value and cos will decrease from its value unity to some smaller value and this will increase. So, you will the point will be somewhere here. Later in time when this quantity becomes equal to pi by 2 this is also pi by 2 v x becomes 0 v y becomes v perp. So, you are coming to a point here means if you put points at different instant of time you will draw a equation of a circle. Obviously, this is the equation of a circle and you are moving in this direction as time goes on. 
this is a motion of the particle velocity in the clockwise anti clockwise sense. But the beauty here is that if I take a right handed screw my electron is rotating in the right hand sense like this and if I rotate my right handed screw along the direction of velocity velocity change this is the arrow in which the velocity uh, curve is evolving. In that case the direction of advancement of the screw will be the z axis and that is the direction of magnetic field. Means if I see in the direction of magnetic field then the electron orbit will look like moving in this way. This is the electron orbit just like if I advance a rotate a right handed screw like this then the direction of advancement of the screw will be the direction of magnetic field. So, I will call this motion as RCP right circularly polarized motion RCP. So, the electrons in a magnetic field gyrate about the line of force in the right handed sense just like a right handed screw moves. And how about the z component of equation of motion? Because the z component of equation of motion if you examine m dv z by dt which is equal to minus e v cross v s this is the force I want z components since B s is in the z direction this quantity is 0 this tells you that V z is a constant of motion. So, let me write this V z is a constant of motion let me call this as V 0 z it is a constant of motion. So, but we have learnt that the electron velocity of the line of force is unaffected by the magnetic field it remains as such forever and the transverse velocity magnitude wise remains constant, but its direction changes it moves on a circular path in a circular manner. Now, I want to find out the actual trajectory the x and y coordinates of the particle to do that I use this definition that d x by d t is equal to v x particular velocity in the x direction and which was equal to v perp cos omega c t plus delta. And similarly d y by d t which was the y component of electron velocity equal to v perp sin omega c t plus delta. You can easily integrate this equa these equations if I integrate this first equation I will get x is equal to some constant of integration which I call x g plus v perp upon omega c sin omega c t plus delta and the second equation will give me y is equal to some constant of integration y g plus rather it will be minus sorry let me remove this minus v perp upon omega c cos omega c t plus delta. There is a beauty in these equations if I take x minus x g and y minus y g and square them and add I will get x minus x g whole square plus y minus y g whole square is equal to v perp square by omega c square this v perp 
please remember is the magnitude of perpendicular velocity where perpendicular refers to is with respect to magnetic field. This is a equation of a circle whose center is x g by g. Electron does not reach the center, but the electrons coordinates are x and y. So, if I plot a graph here, suppose x g by g being constant of motion could be anywhere. Suppose this is here, I am plotting x here, y there. This is the equation of a circle like this. This is the equation of motion circle and the radius of the circle is I call as rho which is equal to V per by omega c. So, the electron will move in the clockwise in this anti clockwise sense on this plane or this is called right circle in RCP way right circle polarized way like this it is a circle of radius rho which is the ratio of perpendicular velocity of the electron to omega c and is called larval radius. For electrons this rho is given used a symbol subscript e rho e is equal to v perp upon omega c you may avoid the subscript also does not matter. Well, this is a quantity that is inversely proportional to cyclotron frequency and if you ex look at the expression for omega c which is equal to E B s upon m. This is how I defined omega c. This quantity is inversely proportional to mass and hence rho e is proportional to mass into perpendicular velocity. So, this goes as mass of the particle into velocity of the particle v perp. Obviously, it will go as inversely as charge and magnetic field. Basic thing is in here that in a plasma at finite temperature electron speed scales as temperature to the power half and consequently the Larmor radius rho scales as and this is proportional to m minus half also. Velocity scales as under root of temperature upon mass. If I put this in here I get that the Larmor radius will scale as m to the power half and temperature to the power half. This is the scaling, this will have charge dependence on and magnetic field dependence as well, but as far as the dependence on mass is concerned this goes like this. What I wanted to tell you is that if I had considered the ion motion, then the ion will also undergo a gyration about the lines of force but the Larmor radius will be much bigger because mass is bigger for ions. If the temperature and of ions and electrons are comparable, then ions will have a much larger Larmor radius. They will rotate over a very large circle and electrons if they are rotating on this small circle, the ions will rotate over a very large circle and the rotation will be opposite sense. We shall learn about this in a little while. This is the ion motion, this is the electron motion. So, in a magnetic field plasma electrons rotate in the right handed sense about the lines of force or about the magnetic field and ions rotate in the left handed sense with a much larger Larmor radius and a word about omega c why it is called the cyclotron frequency. If you look at the expression for x that we had written like x g plus rho sin omega c t plus delta and y is equal to y g minus rho cos omega c t plus delta. 
these are the coordinates of an electron that are evolving with time. But you see here that whatever is the value of x at certain time t the same value of x will be repeated at a time t plus 2 pi by omega c because if I add 2 pi in this phase then sin theta and sin theta plus 2 pi are same cos theta and cos theta plus 2 pi are same they are repeated. So, in place of t if I replace t by this quantity then x and y do not change means that the particle is reaching same it started from some point goes round and comes back to the same point after a time 2 pi by omega c. So, this is called the time period of rotation. of rotation of electron t is equal to 2 pi upon omega c inverse of this period is called frequency in Hurj. So, frequency of rotation in Hurj is equal to 1 upon t and this can be written as omega c upon 2 pi it is in Hurj cycles uh, radian uh, sorry cycles per second and if I want to put in radian per second then the frequency of rotation in radian per second is omega c which is equal to 2 pi by into f frequency of rotation in of gyration rather in radian per second and it is useful to have some est estimate of this magnetic field say uh, this cyclone frequency omega c which is equal to E B s upon m. If I choose B s is equal to 1 tesla which is a unit of magnetic field in m k system of units and 1 tesla is 10 to the power 4 gauss. Gauss is a unit of magnetic field in CJ systems. So, if I choose B s as 1 tesla omega c turns out to be electron charge is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb B s I choose 1 mass of the electron is 9.1 10 to the minus 31 kilogram then this is a radian per second which is of the order of if I choose this something like 10 then this becomes 30. So, 10 if I take here then this becomes 30 30 when goes up becomes 11 11. So, this becomes typically 1 point maybe 7 1 1.7 into 10 to the power 11 radian per second. If you divide this by 2 pi you will get in Hurj 2 pi is like 6 this turns out to be like 3 typically of the order of 3, 3 30 gigahertz. So, when I divide this by 2 pi which is I take like 6 then 1.7 divided by 6 is like 0.3 into 10 to 11 if I put in terms of gigahertz giga means 10 to the power 9 hertz then this is like 30 gigahertz. So, a very interesting estimate for omega c is at 1 tesla the cyclone frequency of electrons is 30 gigahertz. Now, when you are trying to heat a plasma by using electromagnetic waves via cyclone resonance heating then you would like to match the frequency of the wave to electron cyclone frequency and then you should be choosing waves of frequencies around 30 gigahertz if the plasma has a magnetic field of about 1 tesla. If the plasma wave has a magnetic if the plasma has a magnetic field about 10 tesla like a large tokamak has then you should be aiming at wave frequency about 30, 300 gigahertz. So, that is a, a thing that you must keep in view that what kind of waves 
are required if you want to employ electron cyclotron resonance heating of plasma. So, omega c is an important parameter. Well, a word about the ion motion. The ion motion is governed by this equation mass of the ion into dv by dt for the ion charge of the ion is plus E not minus E and V cross B s. This V is the ion velocity you can put a subscript I or may not subscript does not matter. The important difference is the charge sign. So, here I define omega c i as the magnitude of this charge of the ion if it is singly ionized into B s upon m i. Then what happens? This equation takes the form d v by d t is equal to omega c i into v cross z cap which is the direction of magnetic field. Compare this equation with the electron equation of motion which was for the ions in the electrons we had d v by d t is equal to minus omega c into v per v cross z cap means the solutions of this equation that we had obtained in those solutions if I replace omega c by minus omega c i I should recover the same result the results for ions and when you do this you obtain for the velocity of ions. So, for ions I obtain velocity is equal to V perp of the ion into if I take cos omega c t plus some constant delta this delta may not be the same as the original delta, but it is a constant of motion. This is the sorry this is I am writing V x remove this arrow from here v x is so much then v y turns out to be minus v perp this is I will let me put a subscript i here omega c i t plus delta. So, ions have a cyclotron frequency much less than the electron cyclotron frequency and the sense of rotation is also different if I plot a graph here with v x on the x axis for the ions and v y on the y axis then the elect ions suppose initially this argument is 0 v x is equal to v per p v i is 0, but later on at subsequent times this point will move the locus will move on a circle in this way. So, it will go in this sense in this clockwise sense electron was in the anticlockwise sense. So, the rotation of ions is different. Similarly, if you write down the x coordinate, it will be x g and then it was plus v perp upon omega c i, it was if I write this cos just a second let me see if I put this dx by dt then this turns out to be so much into cos sorry it becomes sin omega c i t plus delta and y is equal to y g plus v perp upon omega c i cos omega c i t plus delta. So, if I plot x here x coordinate the ion here and y coordinate here this is my point x g y g called the guiding center and then the ion rotation will be like this. The radius of rotation would be rho i and rho i I will define as the ion perpendicular velocity 
upon omega c i. This quantity will scale as because mass of the ion into perpendicular velocity of the ion obviously upon charge of the ion magnitude into B s this is exactly equal. And if I consider my plasma to be Maxwellian then V perp is related to ion temperature and ion mass. So, this scale says mass to the power half and ion temperature to the power half. So, ion larmidity certainly is very large. So, there are two important differences in electron motion and ion motion. Ion cyclotron frequency is very low because omega c i depends on ion mass inversely. So, if you want to heat ions by using ion cyclotron resonance by electromagnetic waves, then you need waves of much lower frequencies. That is a very important thing because ion mass is for even for a proton plasma if you have is about 2000 times bigger omega m i is 2000 bigger than the electron mass. So, you require a wave frequency 2000 times a smaller. If you are having a deuterium tritium plasma then you are having two kinds of ions with their cyclone frequencies obviously different omega c for deuterium is different than omega c for tritium and they are 4000 or 6000 times smaller than the electron cyclotron frequency. So, whenever you aim at heating the ions you should aim at having electromagnetic waves or electrostatic waves of frequencies close to omega c i. Second thing is that the ion larmer radius is much bigger than the electron larmer radius. Well, this is primarily the motion in a uniform magnetic field which is unbounded in the z direction. So, z d z by d t if I write down it is equal to v z which is a constant equal to v 0 z that we had seen and if you integrate this gives you z is equal to some constant initial value of z coordinate of the particle plus v 0 z t. So, the particle will keep on moving in the z direction whereas, will start keep on rotating about the guiding center. So, in the x y plane the particle motion is a circle whereas, it has to move in the z direction. So, if I have a line of force like this then the electron which is if it, it has no velocity v 0 z velocity then it will rotate in a circle, but because of this z this will keep on moving like this. So, this is how it will move. this is the electron motion ion motion will be of this form this will be like this well the ion will be moving slower than the electron but the ion larval radius will be much bigger i have by mistake I have drawn this to be of same comparable size, but the electron larmer radius is much smaller than the ion larmer radius maybe 50 times or 100 times this is smaller than this radius from here to here this is called larmer radius rho i larmer radius here is rho e electron larmer radius ions move with larger larmer radius. Well, when we encounter magnetic fields which are curved or inhomogeneous then the motion of equation of motion becomes difficult to solve. However, if we understand the particle motion in crossed field means suppose there is a magnetic field along z direction and if you apply an electric field or a gravitational field or any other force perpendicular to magnetic field and if you can understand the dynamics of electron or ion in these two fields then based on our understanding of this problem 
we can understand the particle motion in curved and inhomogeneous magnetic fields very easily. So, before I delve into the particle motion in curved fields, curved magnetic fields, I would like to consider the case when there is an electric field in the system, suppose it is parallel to x axis and there is a magnetic field in the system which is in the z direction. These are called crossed electric and magnetic fields. and magnetic fields. I would like to delve into this problem. Both I will consider to be electro to be static independent of time and uniform. A question of motion for electrons I will write. this is mass into acceleration is equal to charge of the electron minus E into the electric field E minus E V cross B s. This is the magnetic force, this is the electric force on the electron. Well, let me write down this component x and y components. x component would give me m dv x by dt is equal to minus E E x and this will give me if I can write this minus E if I take common take the x component of this equation this turns out to be plus V by B s and the y component of equation of motion is mass m d v y by d t is equal to there is no y component of electric field so this term is not there. This gives me plus E V x B s. You may note here when there was no E x, these two equations were similar, V x equations con contained V y, V y contained V x, obviously signs were different in these two places, but now some additional term is coming in here, which is a DC term, it does not depend on time or position. So, if I can redefine my V y, say V y prime, such that these terms can be clubbed together, then what I can do? So, let me define V y prime such that this is equal to V y plus E x upon B s. Then, so means or V y I am saying put V y is equal to some quantity like V y prime minus E x upon B s if I define like this. So, if I substitute for V y like this in both those equations then the x component equation becomes m d v x upon d t is equal to minus E v y prime v s and the other equation becomes m d v y prime by d t is equal to E v x b s. These two equations are exactly same as if there were no electric field. The only difference is that v y is to be replaced by v y prime and we have already solved these equations earlier. So, I will simply write down the solution. The solution turns out to be V x is equal to some constant A cos omega C t plus delta and V y prime is equal to A sin omega C t plus delta where 
a and delta are constants of integration to be evaluated by using the initial conditions and omega c is the same as before which is charge of the electron magnitude wise into B s upon mass of the electron. Now, V y prime is really not the y component of velocity, actual velocity is V y. So, I should use this V y prime in this equation, then my V y becomes So, your V y is equal to A sin omega c t plus delta minus E x upon B s. Now, please note this is a DC term. So, electron velocity besides having a oscillatory part has a DC drift, it is continuously drifting without changing sign, it is continuously drifting in y direction with this velocity minus E x upon B s. And if your electric field is in the x direction, magnetic field is in the z direction, this is your B s and this is your E x field. Then this velocity is in the y direction, y direction is z cross x or so I can really write down this velocity as let me call this is v 0 velocity. So, this v 0 which is equal to minus E x upon B s can be really called as E cross B s upon B s square because x cross z is minus y. So, this is the same thing and I am writing the y component of this quantity. Actually, there is only y component finite. So, what we are really getting? That the presence of a transverse electric field in the system gives rise to a drift DC drift to particles and vector wise if I have to write simply then the electrons will acquire a drift V 0 which is equal to E cross B s upon B s square. Please note this drift is independent of mass and independent of charge whether they are the electrons or ions they will move in the same direction with the same DC drift. So, if you have a plasma somewhere placed somewhere here, magnetic field is here and if there is an electric field that you apply in the transverse direction, then besides having the cyclotron motion about the field lines, the plasma electrons will drift in the direction perpendicular to E and B both. If my electric field is here, then the plasma electrons though they will be gyrating with the line of force like this, but then they will be lifting themselves up and this is a constant velocity. So, what kind of tra trajectories I expect? The electrons were suppose I think it will be better if I plot z axis here and y axis is here, y axis there then in the x y plane it will be x z y z plane it will be better to plot. My electric field is in the x direction and y cross z in the x. So, this is into the plane of this board into the board there is my direction of electric field. So, normally I would expect that the electrons they will be having a minus z velocity and if they have a v 0 z also finite then they will move in z direction also. So, they will be moving away. If electric field were not there in the y z plane what will happen? The electron this is my x direction electron will be gyrating in the x y plane like this like this actually in this way electron will be gyrating like this. So, y will be moving like this, but now besides that they will be moving in this direction 
because of v0z velocity and v0y velocity. So, the electrons are gyrating away. Uh, I could have plotted in the x y plane also, what will happen in the x y plane? Suppose this is my x direction, y direction, the electrons are gyrating about the line of force in this way, in this fashion, but as they go down, they will go down like this. This is what happens. So, the electron is traveling actually with the this radius remains the same, this is a wrong picture. This, these are not a smaller radii. So, the electrons are moving away from the line of force. This line of line of force actually is this one. Magnetic field is in z direction perpendicular to the plane of this board. So, they, they are moving like, like this perpendicular direction. So, E cross B drift takes electrons away from the line of force, which is a very serious matter. One should never try to have a DC electric field created in the plasma by charged particle motion. Otherwise, that will take away electrons and ions both in the same direction away from the lines of force or magnetic field region to outer region and causes loss of plasma confinement. In general, if you had any other sort of force transverse to magnetic field, what would happen? Let me just write down and give you some general expression. Suppose I had a force F in general direction perpendicular to a static magnetic field. Then my equation of motion for electron would be m dv by dt is equal to F minus E v cross b s. However, f I can certainly write without any loss of generality any vector f if I consider a quantity b s cross f cross b s upon b s square. Suppose I examine this quantity how much is this? We will note that this quantity is f vector into b s dot b s this is identity actually b s dot b s upon b s square minus this b s vector and f dot b s. upon B s square. However, I have chosen F and B s to be perpendicular, so this term goes away and B s dot B s is simply B s square, so this is identically equal to F. Means, I can certainly write this F as a cross product of this and this quantity if I take B s on the other side is simply equal to F cross B s cross B s upon B s square with a negative sign. This term I can certainly write like this A cross B is minus B cross A this is what I have done. Now, what you can see here if I put this F equal to this expression in here minus sign is there minus sign is there then my equation becomes M dV by dt is equal to minus E if I take common then you will get in the interior one of the term will be V plus F cross B s upon E B s square cross B s means I can certainly define a V prime quantity 
is equal to v plus a constant this constant f cross b s upon e b s square then the structure of this equation becomes m d v prime by d t just put v equal to this minus this and differentiate this is a constant independent of time then this quantity becomes equal to minus e v prime cross b s as if there is no f there is no other force except the dc magnetic field and the particle motion that we studied in uniform magnetic field holds and consequently the solution turns out to be as if this quantity with the negative sign is called drift so dc drift due to the force which is equal to minus f cross b s upon e b s square and for ions v i drift would be f cross b s upon charge of the ion upon b s square. This is a important issue this is the force on the electron this is the force on the ion these forces may be different. So, this is a important thing I think we will be using this expression for drift due to a transverse force in the presence of a DC magnetic field and when we discuss the confinement of plasma or plasma motion in non-uniform and curved magnetic fields these expressions will be important. Well, I wanted to discuss with you the relevance of E cross B drift in magnetic insular diode probably I will defer this discussion to my next lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.